first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some simple CSS stuff. I've been talking about CSS for, uh, you know, since the beginning of class. Um, I'm not sure exactly where they covered in the book. I think I like to cover a little bit of it before they talk about it in the book just to uh, kind of give you the idea because, you know, I've been saying and saying and saying we're going to use CSS to control that. Well, you know, it's about time to see some, some of that in action. So that's what we'll, we'll start out with today. Um, and again, I, I don't know how far we'll get today. Maybe that will be our only topic today. Um, the next topic after that will be text formatting. And I will tell you that I'm not going to spend tons of time in class about that. Uh, that's something I would expect you to get from the book. The reason for that, that, that I'm not going to cover it in too great a detail, is that um, it's not something I think I can add a lot to what it says in the book. In other words, what they say in the book is fine. I think you'll understand it. Certainly bring questions to class if you have questions. But for me to run down a list of a dozen tags or so is going to, if it's going to bore me, imagine how much it would bore you. All right. Uh, and then, uh, so, but, but I will talk about it to some degree. Uh, and then the, the last topic that we'll get into this week probably will be images. So um, we'll see how it goes. Again, uh, um, I don't know to what degree we'll cover all of them, but we'll, you know, we'll, we'll take a shot. All right, CSS. Um, we, we've talked about throughout the beginning, uh, th since the beginning of the semester, about how um, HTML is meant to represent the content of the page. And CSS is meant to represent the appearance of the page. Uh, another word that sometimes we use synonymous with appearance is we'll say the presentation of the page. In other words, the way it looks. And we're going to start small by controlling some very simple aspects of the appearance. And then throughout the semester, you know, we'll do a little bit of HTML, a little bit of CSS, and we'll grow to where we have complete control over every aspect of the page's uh, appearance. That is, we'll control fonts, we'll control colors, we'll control sizes of things. And probably the, the, the biggest thing that we'll get into that we'll spend probably the most time on We'll be talking about controlling the positions of things. All right, that won't come for a little while, so you sort of have to bear with me. So many of you, uh, you know, uh, ma many students at this point of the class get a little impatient and they want to do a little bit more. Well, we got to kind of work up to that. So you're definitely welcome to investigate some of the stuff on your own and to try it from this assignment on. If I haven't said to do it a certain way, then you're you're free to experiment, I guess is what I'm saying. All right. But let's start out with some basic CSS um, so that we can define like the way it works and, and, and review, get an overview of the syntax of it. So let's say I have my web page here. All right. And What, what, what topic do we want to talk about today? What do we want to make? Tetris. My favorite video game, probably. Tetris is a great video game. It was created by a Russian fellow, forget his name, sometime in the 80s. You can tell this is a very factual web page. At least this web page admits that it doesn't know all the details as opposed to some web pages that claim to have all the details but, but don't. All right. All right. So if we view this, we've seen how it goes. And we know, again, that the white space and the way that, that I have laid this out and the way I've, I, I've indented it really has no impact on the browser. All right. I have my basic tags. I have my HTML tag, my head tag, 
title, body. Then within that I have H1 and a paragraph. I'm going to put in, um, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it out for now. I was going to put in an article tag, but we'll leave that out for now. So I'll go and I'll save this. And I'll view it in the browser. And that's what we get. All right, all well and good. And we could add stuff to it. We could add paragraphs and headings all the way down the line. Now, we want to get into creating CSS for it. And the CSS is going to appear in the, t in the head section along with the title. Again, um, I guess the way that makes sense for me is the stuff that goes in the head section is, is information about the page, not the actual like, page itself. The content of the page, the stuff that you like see inside the window goes in the body section, whereas the styling of it and all that, that goes in the head section. Always? Mm -hmm. it, well, you know, always is a, is, a, is a big word, but typically yes. I'm going to put a style tag here. This tells the browser, hey, we are not in HTML land anymore. We are in CSS land. So the stuff between the start and end style tag indicates that this is style code, not HTML code. All right. So let's go and let's make the page have different colors. First of all, is there anyone in class that is colorblind? Okay. We'll talk a little bit later on about colorblindness because it is something that, as a web developer, you do need to, to consider. One thing to keep in mind is that colors I pick a lot of times are meant um, to really stand out. All right, so I'm not pretending that these are going to be the prettiest colors, but but they're meant to be standing out. All right, so that it's obvious what I'm doing. So we'll start out with this, and we'll see how it looks. And if it doesn't look too hideous, we'll continue with it. If it does look too hideous, we'll change it. All right. So this should make the background of the page red and the color of the text yellow. So let's look at that. And sure enough, there we go. All right, I guess that's not too bad. It's readable. All right, good Soviet colors there, red and, and yellow. Let's dissect this style rule to see exactly what we have going on here. All right, again, it's in the style tag. We have body. Then we have these braces. And inside the braces, we have some stuff. All right, the word body in this case, in other words, the stuff that appears before the braces, is what is called the selector. <coughs> the selector determines what on the page gets the style rule. All right. We want to be able to point to things on the page and say, this thing on the page, this is the way I want it to look. We can do that via a selector. There's several different kinds of selectors. Probably the simplest, the most basic selector, is we can define an HTML tag as a selector. And what that means is everything in that HTML tag gets this style rule. All right? So, if I wanted to make the H1 on this page, Let's say I want it to be the opposite. I want the background to be yellow.
and the color of the text red. There are colons here, there are semicolons here. We'll review that in more detail in a minute here. Right now I want to focus on the selector. Again, the selector defines what on the page gets a style rule. So in this case I'm saying everything in the body gets a style rule and everything in the H1 gets a style rule. So if I go and look at this and save it, we'll notice that the whole page is red with yellow text except for the H1, and the H1 is the reverse. Why? Because the H1 selector says that this particular section of the page has a background of yellow and a color of red. Now, in this case, remember that the H1 is part of the body. All right, so why does it get the H1 rule? Well, you get the most specific rule that applies to you. So in this case, if there is no rule for the H1, if I get rid of this, then the H1 is the same color as the rest of the page. But if I put the H1 selector in, then because that's more specific, all right, because it's kind of closer to this tag, it's more specific, it's pointing directly to that tag, that one will take precedence. All right, now we could go in and we can assign a style rule for a paragraph. And maybe a paragraph we will say background white, color black. And there that paragraph gets the different color. All right. So, first thing about a style rule is there is going to be a selector. And the selector selects what gets that rule. If multiple rules apply, then a more specific one takes precedence. Now, this is a case where, you know, some of the basic rules of CSS are pretty simple. Where the complexity comes in is the whole fact that you can have rules on different levels and you can have different rules on different levels and all that. And that's sort of the cascading part. All right, and we'll see examples of this going forward. For example, what would happen, do you suppose, if I get rid of the background white for the paragraph? What color will the paragraph be? I think it would go to a default. Correct. In other words, in this case, a paragraph rule applies, so the text color of this will be black. I don't have a rule for the text color for the paragraph, but I do have a rule for the text color on the body. Therefore, I'm sorry, not the text color, but the background color. Therefore, the background color will apply to the paragraph as well, right? Because the paragraph is part of the body. So, in this case, both the body rule and the paragraph rule applies, but since I don't define the background color on the paragraph level, this paragraph will get the body's background color. And sure enough, we'll go here and save it and view it. Now if I go in and put the background color in, the paragraph will get the background color that I designate here. That's the cascading part of CSS rules. That you can have more than one rule that applies and it gets, you know, a, a, a thing on the page could get its appearance from actually several rules. All right, as we saw in that case. Now, there's one more thing to kind of throw a monkey wrench in this. 
And that is that the browser also has certain defaults that apply in some cases. So, for example, with this one, notice the font. The font is, I believe, Times New Roman uh, in this. Why is the font Times New Roman? I didn't say anywhere in the CSS file to make the font Times New Roman. Well, that's the browser's default. All right. If I put a link in here, Great game, this page is driving me crazy now. I could make the word Tetris a link here, like you saw we did last week. This is not one of my pages, right? This is a page somewhere else on the internet, so the syntax I'll do will be a href equals, and then I put in quotes the address of the page I want to link to. I have the text I want to make the link, and then finally I have the end link tag. If I look at this, oops, notice that Tetris isn't any of the colors I specified. Tetris is actually kind of a purple color and it's underlined. I never told it to underline links. I never told it to make that link purple. Why is it purple and underlined then? Well, because that's a browser default. All right, the browser default says, hey, make any link that you visited purple and underlined. If I hadn't visited Tetris before, all right, then it would be blue and underlined. But because I, I just visited a second ago, it shows up as purple and underlined. So, the, one second. The appearance of the page is determined by your CSS plus some browser defaults. And with your CSS, the rules cascade. So, the appearance of any particular element on the page could be determined by several different style rules. Yes? <coughs> Uh, that is a function of the browser history. I don't believe a cookie would be required for that, uh, but just the browser history. So if I went and cleared the history for this, um, then it would show up as blue. All right. So, we looked at the selector. We'll see later on, we'll see other kinds of selectors. Uh, the, this is just sort of the, the most basic selector, is to, to select based on an HTML tag. We're actually able to really fine tune it so that we can change just one particular thing on the page. The way we have it now, any paragraph will have that style rule because all I've defined is this is what paragraphs look like. Later on, we'll see ways that I can fine tune it and make one paragraph look one way, one paragraph look another way. All right. This gets back to a basic design principle. All right. Is that in most cases, you want similar things to look the same way. All right. If you have a bunch of paragraphs on a page and they're all the same, all right, they're all just paragraphs in a story. All right. You want them to look the same. Now, if for whatever reason, one of the paragraphs is different, for example, maybe it deviates from the main point a little bit. You know, maybe it's like, like they have in a newspaper, like a sidebar or something like that. Whereas, it relates to the story, but it's like extra information. Then, you can visually show that there's something different about this by making it a different color, using a different font, making it a different size, and so on down the line. All right. So if things are 
similar, they probably should look similar. They should look the same. If things are different, they ought to look different. So if everything has the same meaning, then it should look the same. If something is different, it should look different. Okay, so we've looked at the selector here. Let's look at the style rule within the braces. Alright, this is the selector, this is the style rule. The style rule, if you've noticed, contains a, a, a set of pairs of things. We have background, colon, red. More formally, we have an attribute, a colon, then a value. All right. An attribute again. We're using the same word that we talked that we used last time when we talked about the href attribute. Attributes are characteristics of the tag. The background color of a tag. That's a characteristic of a tag. The text color of a tag is a characteristic of the tag. So, we're going to have these attributes in pairs where we have the name of the attribute, a colon, and then the value for the attribute. Then we have a semicolon to, to separate it from the next attribute. might be a little easier to see exactly what I mean if I do this. The background, colon, red. Again, background's the name of the attribute. What value do I want to give it? I want to give it the value of red. Alright. Semicolon indicates I'm done with this attribute and I'm ready to put in the next. Color. That relates to the color of the text. Colon, what value do I want to give it? I want to give it the value of yellow. Alright. Now, there's a whole slew of attributes. And for each attribute, there's a particular kind of value that it's expecting. Alright. For colors, such as the background color and the text color, there's a couple of different ways that we can express a color. And one of them is with the name of the color. Now, again, you know, two people can describe the same color as different ways. Well, there's a list of standard color names that, that there are. And if we go out to Google, we can look and we can see what some of those color names are. color name supported by all browsers. 140 of them. Alice Blue, Antique White, Aqua, Aquamarine, Beige, Black, and so on down the line. So I should be able to put any of these in. So I could put in this example background of khaki and the color of black. And we see that our page looks like that. All right. So we have 140 of these color names. You'll notice alongside the color name is what they call a hex code. Hex is short for hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is a numbering system that is base 16. You know, our standard numbering system is base 10. You know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. <coughs> then you go 10, 11, 12, 13, and 20, you know, all the way up to 100, 1,000. I'm not going to count up to a thousand. It's too early on Monday for that. 
I'd probably mess up around 40. All right. But with hexadecimal, you have, instead of 10 digits, like you do in base 10, right, you can have 0 through 9, you actually can have 16 digits. All right? 0 through 9 are still 0 through 9, but A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, F is 15. So you have digits from 0 through F. So, another way to express a color is by putting in the hex code. So instead of putting in the name of khaki, I can put in that. Yes. And it ought to work the same. Yeah, uh, I, I know it is a pound sign, so it, it's also used to indicate pounds, I believe. Uh, I, I think when Twitter became popular, because Twitter is, it, it, my recollection, the first one to use what are called hashtags. Now a lot of places use them, but, but probably when Twitter became popular is when hashtags well, I guess one thing that's nice is, is, is more people recognize the term hashtag now than knew what a pound sign was or a number sign or that little tic-tac-toe looking thing or, or whatever, you, you know, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So, that's how we can set colors on a page. All right. Now, selecting colors is actually a science. All right. I mean, it deals, you know, there, you can read all kinds of stuff about color theory and determining what colors go together and all that. So if you're not sure of, like, what colors go together, all right, there's actually a lot of tools that can help you out on the web. There's actually color wheels. In the old days, there used to be little, little physical color wheels that graphic designers would use and turn to find colors that match this color. But we can actually go and look for HTML color generator. And... This one I like the best. You can pick like what shade you want. Like let's say for example here I want, maybe I want the page to be blue. I can pick the shade of blue I want, let's say. I can then pick the general scheme. This scheme, the first scheme is mono, so monochromatic. In other words, it will be, everything's going to be shades of blue. All right? I could pick complementary, where they're across from each other on the color wheel. I could pick triads. I could pick tetrads. And so on. I'm going to keep it simple and stick with uh, monochromatic. Eh, we'll live it up today. All right, we'll, we'll go to complementary colors. And again, notice as I move this, it adjusts both the regular color and the complementary color. Now, one thing about colors on your web page. All right, um, use them judiciously. All right, in other words. We, we've now learned how to make every single HTML tag on your page a different color. Does that mean that you go in and you make every single HTML tag on your page a different color? Of course not. It's, it'll be a case of overkill when you do that. Remember why we're using color. All right? We're not just using color to make something that looks pretty. We're using color to convey meaning, to emphasize some things, to make some things stand out. All right, to focus the user's attention on certain things. To give them visual cues about what your page means. Again, the whole bit of things that 
mean the same thing or things that are the same level of importance should look the same as well. So we don't want to go crazy with the colors is the bottom line. Remember that in addition to the colors that the color generator gives you, you can always use white and black and really any shade of gray. All right. So let's go and let's look at the color scheme for this. How do we get to the color scheme? Oh, here we go, color list. And it'll give me the code for these things. So, for example, I could make maybe my background color of the page this color. And maybe the background of my header this color. And maybe the color of text for my header is this color. just as an example. Okay. So I guess what I'm saying is, if you're not sure on picking colors, you can use a tool like this that, that uses the, the basic rules of color theory to come up with colors that um, are to go with each other. Yes? <laughs> Yes, it does. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. All right. Th that, that's the equivalent question of saying, does it matter if it's 18 or 81, you know, in a regular number? Yeah, the, the position of the digits number, uh, or the positions of the digits number, sure. The position of the digits matter, all right? So let's talk about what these codes mean, all right? Let's talk about what these hex codes mean. These hex codes are six characters long, all right? There is a shorthand where you can only put in three characters, but forget about that for now, all right? And these represent how much of three colors that we're going to mix. So it's three pair of numbers, all right? So let's look at Let's look at the first one. The first one is 1531AE. All right. These are three pairs of numbers. Remembering that an A represents a 10 and an E represents a 14. So this would be 10 sixteens plus 14 ones. All right. This would be three sixteens plus one one, one sixteen plus five ones. These colors represent how much red, green, and blue respectively is going to be in this color. At a glance, I could tell that this is going to be a some shade of blue. How do I know it's some shade of blue? Because this pair is higher than either of these two pairs. All right. One five is actually a low number, right? Because these numbers go from zero zero all the way to FF. FF would be a high number. That would be the equivalent of 99. No, not the equivalent, but just like 99 is a high number in decimal, FF is a very high number in hex. It's the highest two-digit number. This would be 255, right? 
255 in decimal. So, A is a high number, so A0 is bigger than 90. B0 is bigger than all than either of these two. All right. So what this tells me is I have a lot of blue here and just a pinch of green and just a tiny pinch of red. So that's how we get that color. All right. We can see more obvious examples of this if we go and we really make this dramatic. So for example, if I make this FF0000, what color is this going to be? It's going to be red. It's going to be the reddest of the reds. All right? Why is that? Well, because the red part of it's really high, and there's no green or blue to kind of mellow it out. All right? So it's just going to be a very vivid red. So if I went and saved this and viewed... Oops. Sure enough, that's a very bright red. And again, it, it project, it, it's hard to see on the projector, but trust me, that's a very bright red. All right? What do you suppose this would look like? DD0000. Zero, 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 zero. Well, it's a little less red, but still no green or no blue. So it'll be red, but it'll be a darker shade of red. If I go and say darker, because there's less red. So instead of the red being on full blast, I turn the dimmer on the red a little bit. All right? No, makes it darker. If I turn a light down, if I put a dimmer on the light, that makes the room darker. It doesn't make the room lighter. Zero. Exactly. So FF is full blast. In other words, imagine I have a red floodlight. So zero, zero there is going to be black. Zero, well, zero, zero there. There's no color at all. Zero, zero says that there's no green and blue in the mix. All right? You've got to look at it as pairs. Red, I have turned up pretty high, but not all the way. Green, I have no green. Blue, I have no blue. So if I view this, it's going to be red, but it's not going to be the vivid red, because I've turned down the red a little bit. So there it's a little bit darker. Now, absolutely right. If I take all three pairs down to zero, then I have black. Because I have no red at all, I have also have no green or no blue. So, we're at black. If I gradually turn that up a little bit, and again, this might be a little hard to see on the screen, But, make sure I saved it. That's actually a very dark shade of red. But it's so light that it's almost black. Let me make it a little bit lighter. So the intensity of the color against black is the High means bright, low means dark. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I, I guess I look at it a little bit different way, but yeah, essentially high means bright, low means dark. Conceptually, I'm coming at it from a photography background. And it's light as opposed to, pig, uh, to pigment. So it's how much light is there and how much you're illuminating. So, what color do you suppose this would be? FF, 0, 0, FF. Well, let's look at it. Red, green, and blue. So we have a lot of red and a lot of blue. 
What happens when you mix a lot of red and a lot of blue? You get purple. If I turn down the blue a little bit, so if I do this, this will be a redder shade of purple. If I turn up the blue and turn down the red, then it'll be a bluer shade of purple. Now, of course, if I turn them all off, I have black. And if I turn them all on, I have gray. Oh, I'm sorry, I have white. I was thinking ahead of myself. If I make them equal, that's when I have gray. So. That's a shade of gray. All right. Now, here's the good news to this. You could not have understood a word that I said in the past five minutes and you're still okay. Why are you still okay? Because there's charts that give you the colors. Just like you go to a paint store and there's charts. If you want a color, you can go and view the HTML chart. And you might not even know what this means, but this tells you that this color is FF. DD or, or FFD673. All right. I do think it's useful to, to know uh, maybe if you have a color and you want to tweak it a little bit, like maybe make it a little darker, you can go in and you know, you know to make the numbers lower. All right. If you want to make it more red, you can make the red higher. You want to make the, um, you know, a um, little less red, you can make the, the number lower. All right, so it is valuable to learn that. Now, where do we go from here with CSS? Well, there are more elaborate selectors, and there's more also more style rules. All right, and you're encouraged to experiment and play around with this. Uh, W3 Schools is a good place to learn some of these things. All right, and we'll be talking about them in class. Okay, we could do something like this then. We could put footer in here. I could go in and put the footer like that. Now, if we want to do more, if we want to make it uh, longer, we can use the height attribute to do that. Um, um, that gets into positioning. Uh, there's, there's any number of ways that you can do that. One thing to keep in mind is um, that when you talk about the bottom of the page, um, that's actually a tougher question than it sounds because the bottom of the page all the time, the bottom of the page on a certain size monitor, at the absolute, you know, so there's a lot of twists with that. Um, 
when we talk about positioning, we can, we can review all sorts of, of things. I believe to do that, we could say... I know it's like a new trend on the website where at the bottom, they have the links now. Mm -hmm. like all right. Um, you could do something like this. You could say position fixed bottom that should do it. And notice as I resize the window. It always stays 10 pixels from the bottom. Or what I, not 10 pixels, 50 pixels from the bottom. So you could do that. Problem with this is this doesn't work on every browser. Um, so you run into difficulties there too. So positioning, getting the position just right is really probably the toughest thing that we'll talk about in CSS. So. But we can see an example here how we can do it, how we can we can get the position, and we'll def definitely see more examples of it. Uh, I'm not going to say that. Um, each you know each each project that you're working on, each set of web pages, you know, is its own unique creature, and you have to figure out a solution that works best for that. You're absolutely right. This is a very effective tool because it keeps the links in a constant spot, a bottom and all that. So, yeah, this is, this is something that you definitely can do. The other thing that you could do is you could put a set of links on the side and keep it frozen in a certain position from the top. The point is, is that this, this is, you know, this isn't something that I have like a two-minute answer for. All right, we'll, over the course of the term, we'll evolve and we'll, we'll add some skills and we'll add some techniques, and all those together will sort of um, determine um, the, the way to go with this. One other thing, and I suppose we'll save it for next time, is here's where some of the cool stuff comes in. I can actually take this style code and put it in a separate file. All right. Well, what's so great about that? Yes. E exactly. I can put and I can I can associate with a whole bunch of pages the same CSS file, and therefore if I decide. I want my page to be a, to have a different font. I can make the change in one place, and that change will be reflected throughout my site. Or if I want a different color scheme, or if I want any sort of change. If I don't like the footer there locked in place, and I want to move it so it behaves in a different manner, I just need to make that change in one place, and that change will be reflected um, across every page. So that's sort of the, 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 the next step in this process. And we'll probably look at that to start class on Wednesday. And then we'll get into the text formatting and images. Now, again, keep in mind that this is just the very base introduction to CSS, just to kind of give you a sense of how it works. Believe me when I say just about anything that deals with the appearance of a page, you can change via CSS. We're just scratching the surface, and the color is like the most obvious one, I think, that, that we can look at first. But if you look, you can set the widths of things, the heights of things, the position, the fonts, all these sorts of things. Yes? And when you said that about the style, that has to go on each page. You can't. In other words, that style, we can copy it and paste it into the other well, well, no, actually, well, the last thing that I was saying is that we can put the style in a separate file. Oh, okay, I got you. And then, then we can actually, like, link to it. Okay. So, yeah, as it stands now, it, using this technique, I'd have to copy it into each page. But when we go and we put it in its own file, then I can just put a link to it on each page. Different kind of link than a, than a hyperlink, but I can put a link to say, hey, use the style for this page. All right. Other questions? All right, see you over in lab. <laughs>